Today's gospel lesson is taken from the book of John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, known to us as John the Baptist. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory, as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. What was your favorite Bible story when you were a child? What's your favorite Bible story now? What is a favorite Bible story or verse when you're experiencing hardship or grief? What's a favorite Bible story or verse when you're experiencing joy and celebration? What faith traditions have been passed down in your family? in your church, in your denomination, or in your community? How will tradition, heritage, and legacy shape the future? What is one thing that you would like the next generation to know or experience? Today we continue with our summer sermon series, Rich Hymnity. The hymn of the day is, God's word is our great heritage. The lyrics are, God's word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever. To spread its light from age to age shall be our chief endeavor. Through life it guides our way, in death it is our stay. Lord grant while worlds endure, we keep its teachings pure throughout all generations. A beautiful hymn. God's Word is Our Great Heritage was written in 1817 by Danish Lutheran pastor Nikolai F. S. Grundtvig. Pastor Grundtvig wrote the hymn as a fifth verse to Martin Luther's Ein Fest Bird, which is translated into English a mighty fortress is our God. The hymn was translated into English in 1909 and has been a staple in our worship services ever since. So what is this song about? Well, the lyrics of this song have several buzzwords. The first buzzword is right in the title, Heritage. Heritage is about the ages. It includes a predecessor and an heir. It has to do with legacy, passing something from generation to generation. Now, when we talk about the word heritage, oftentimes we tend to look backwards. Heritage has to do with history and tradition. Heritage has to do with the past. 
a focus on what has already happened. Yet on the other hand, heritage also has to do with looking forward. Heritage is not just about what lies behind, but also about what lies ahead. It is about the here and the now. It has to do with vision and future. Heritage is about where we have been, where we are, and where we are going. Another buzzword in this song is ours. The line in the song says, God's word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever. Well, this statement is partly true and partly not true. On one hand, the word of God is ours. In a sense, it was given for you and for me. By scripture, we are empowered, we are entrusted, we are given authority. But on the other hand, the word of God is not ours, and of course, is God's. We are not the owner of Scripture. It is not ours. We are merely the caretakers of it. We are stewards of what God has entrusted us with. You see, this is exactly the definition of stewardship. Stewardship is about trust and responsibility. And God has, of course, entrusted us with many things. Resources, time, talent, and treasure. Children, youth, elderly, vulnerable adults. God has entrusted us with the hungry, the poor, and the naked. God has entrusted us with jobs and vocations, monies and investments. We've been entrusted with ministries and missions, decisions and planning. We have been entrusted with the mysteries of faith. We have been entrusted with the Word of God. This is our great heritage. Passed from age to age, from parent to child, from generation to generation. You see, it's not ours. We only have it for a while. It's God's. But we have been given responsibility to dwell in it, to learn from it, to use it, and to live it. Not to misuse it, abuse it, or to make it something that it's not. So what is it, and what is it not? God's word is God's. It is not ours. God's word is living, it is not dead. God's word is love. It is not hate. God's word is inclusive. It is not exclusive. God's word is a compilation of books, writers, stories, parables, metaphors, illustrations. It is not literal. God's word is to bring peace and reconciliation, not to bring division, violence, or pain. God's word is timeless and forever. God's word is not trendy or temporary. God's word is a cradle, not a sword. The word of God is to bring people together, not to marginalize, oppress, enslave, or belittle, demean, diminish, despair, or depreciate. God's word is justification by grace through faith. God's word is not justification for racism, bigotry, violence, or hatred of any kind. God's word builds up. It does not tear down. God's word is not about revenge. It's about forgiveness. God's word is not a private reserve, but rather is a public wellspring. God's word is a gift given by God. This is our heritage. This is our theology. This is our history and tradition. This is also our future. This hymn reminds us that God's word lights and guides our way. The song says, The word spreads its light from age to age. Through life, it guides our way. 
God's word gives direction. From Psalm 119, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. From John 8, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but in the light of life. God's word gives us direction. It gives us foundation. It gives us something solid, something real, something true to draw from when we are in need of something more. This week, we are in need of something more. God's word gives meaning and purpose and direction in our life. And a few of the Bible stories that give meaning, purpose, and direction to my life, from Matthew 5, Jesus says, You have heard it said, Love your neighbor, but I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Not easy to do. From Galatians 6, Do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us all do good to all people. Now I know I've fallen short, but we try and try, and it gives us direction. From Jeremiah 29, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, so that you can have a future and a hope could go on and on with Bible verses and Bible stories that give life meaning and direction. What are the Bible stories that give meaning and purpose to your life? What stories light your path? What words give you direction and bring peace? In just a few minutes, we'll receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. In communion, we receive the promise of forgiveness, the promise of life, the promise of salvation. How can bread and wine do these things? It's not the bread and wine alone. It's the bread and wine together with the Word of God. This is what we teach our fifth graders when they take their first communion class. This is what we teach our confirmation students that we don't say the body of Christ given. We say something more specific. The body of Christ given for you. Is the word of God given for all people? Yes. And more specifically, the word of God is given for you. What was a favorite Bible story when you were a child? What's a favorite Bible story or verse now? What is a favorite Bible story or verse when you're experiencing grief or sorrow? What is a favorite Bible story or verse when you're experiencing joy and celebration? What faith traditions are passed down in your family, church, denomination, or community? How will tradition, heritage, and legacy shape the future? What is one thing that you would like the next generation to know or experience? God's word is our great heritage. And we are the caretakers. Will it be a private reserve or a public wellspring? May we be good stewards. To God be the glory, now and forever.